Hey, what's going on guys? Mike from the Retrolectors. And when it comes to exclusives on any system, you should have your bases checked. Now, when it comes to the Dreamcast, there are so many exclusive games that never made it to other brands, much like the Xbox, the PlayStation 2, or even the GameCube. A lot of these games stuck with the Dreamcast till its death and demise. And some of these games go down as either mediocre or some games that never really took to many developers looking at them as what they could do with these franchises in the future. Five. Air Wings 1 being the more flight simulator of the two, it was more of showing off what the Dreamcast could do in comparison to games like Ace Combat. Air Wings 1 looks fantastic and for the time only high-end PC flight simulator games looked better. Air Wings 2 was the follow-up to Air Wings, but it changed the dynamic of gameplay in ways that Air Wings 1 just didn't deliver. Things like a much needed battle mode, head-to-head, -head, and 15 flight competition stages. They both delivered something that the Dreamcast lacked in flight games. Egg, Elemental Gimmick Gear, was another game that never got to see the light of day on any other console. Egg was a hand-drawn RPG that was like no other. You control the sleeper, who is awakened after 100 years in the future, to piece together what has happened to the fallen city of Fogna. Boss fights take place in an arena-style fighter, which was something original back in the day for an RPG. It wasn't like a turn-based type of battle, it was more like a fighting type of game. As an RPG's goal, Egg is a very underrated game for the Sega Dreamcast. Not many people knew about it and not many people played it. It does have a cult following and it does deserve its day in the light. One day, hopefully, somebody does a uh, remake, maybe Limited Run Games does a remake on this or something, because this is a unique RPG that kind of deserves the light of day. D2. D2 is a totally different style of game. It's a mix of a bunch of different games into one, and to put my finger onto one that it copies or it mimics is kind of doing it injustice. It has two styles of gameplay, a third person while in the wilderness and a first person in interior settings. Combat is similar to role-playing games where you cannot move, but you have the ability to move your aiming reticles while aiming for different parts of the body. Another thing that this is kind of original was you're allowed to hunt in the wilderness for, or scavenge in the wilderness for health and pickups. This was a horror genre that never really took off. D was originally released on the Sega Saturn. It never really took off past this. A lot of these games that Sega produced or helped publish never really got the light of day. And it's a shame that a game like D2 never got a push towards you know modern consoles or the modern consoles of that time in the Xbox, PS2, and the GameCube. Blue Stinger, another launch title for the Dreamcast. It really showcased what the Dreamcast could do in lighting effects and particle effects. It was something that was leaps and bounds above anything that anybody was releasing at that time. Blue Stinger developed by Climax Graphics, one of the most impressive looking launch Dreamcast games. It helped showcase the potential of the Dreamcast. Blue Stinger received mixed reviews and many comparing it to Resident Evil. It is considered a survival horror game that is quite light on the survival elements as vending machines throughout the game allowed you to pick up health and weapon pickups as you progress in the game. Killing each enemy gave you a currency that allowed you to use it into the vending machines and therefore being able to move and progress in the game a lot easier than trying to scavenge and look for resources to help you progress the game. This was pretty linear as far as trying to find things. It was pretty much given to you. Blue Stinger sold fairly well at 193,000 units wasn't the top of the games that sold the most. As an original IP, it sold what it needed to sell to actually help the Dreamcast and progress the console. Licensed games are a mixed bag. Sometimes you get a really good licensed game and sometimes you get a really crappy one. I think Max Steel falls in the between the both. Max Steel was a third person adventure game released in May 30th, 2001. Max Steel is based on a television series with the same name. Developed by Treyarch, yes, the same Treyarch of Call of Duty fame, Max Steel is an action-adventure game with impressive graphics for the time. Much like the TV show, it never took off to the public, and it's a shame because there was a lot of licensed games that did take off, and this wasn't one of the games that you would see in comparison to those and wonder why this one didn't take it, but some of those other licensed games did. It's not a terrible game. It's not the greatest game, but... The voice acting is very cheap. It's kind of over the, like a, you know, a microphone in your ear type of thing or through your speakers that 
you're at his max deal through the dialogue you're talking to a person through your headset and it didn't really you know showcase much depth as gameplay went but it did serve a purpose for a licensed game and it did sell 50,000 units which is pretty surprising for the time the dreamcast exclusive library does grow from here there's about 20 to 25 games that will be featured in upcoming videos that i will showcase various style of games and, and gameplay elements that the dreamcast never really sold these rights or never nobody else ever picked up these rights for their consoles please like comment subscribe let me know what you guys think if you guys played any of these exclusives back in the day thanks guys